Welcome back, Barbarians. We're back with another episode of Blue Collar Barbarians Podcast, brought to you by the Blue Collar Barbarians Network. And we got a barbarian for you today. I got my brother from Boise on the line, Cody, Cody Hansen. Thank you for joining us tonight, man. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, um, I got to tell you guys, uh, Cody's page, and we'll share where you can find him and how you can support him. We'll share that at the end of the show. But Cody's page is probably one of the most articulate heavy equipment slash construction pages I've seen. Um, his videos are killer. He's are running cool equipment. Uh, if you're a, any sort of a grown child like I am, you excavators just give you a hard on. Like there's just something about watching machinery move and big iron. And so I've been really excited to talk to you about what got you into it and all that stuff. But uh, before we get started, I want to just take a minute to say thank you to TrueWork. TrueWork is going to go ahead and bring us the show. They make all sorts of technical workwear like this flannel right here. This is the B2 tech flannel for those that are watching. Uh, it's comfortable, it's stylish. Your wife thinks you look good in it. And I can go from work to dinner or whatnot wearing this. So thank you to TrueWork for bringing us the show. Cody, my man, let's dive into your story. How'd you get started in heavy equipment, bro? Um, it was actually by chance. Um, my dad was a carpenter growing up, so I kind of did carpentry working for him for a few years, um, when I was younger and I was living up in Northern California at the time he moved up to paradise. Um, and I was up there for a few years and decided to move back home. originally from the, the central coast of California from Carmel Valley, Monterey, Carmel area. Um, I was out of work, um, didn't really have much going on. And my cousin at the time, his, uh, he had a small excavation company that was, you know, he's getting a lot of work. And I went out to breakfast one morning uh, with my buddy and I ran into the parking lot with him. And I said, hey, can I just come work for you for a little bit, make some money so until I find a new gig? And, and he was like, yeah, sure, come on. So I started the next week and then that was it. I, I stuck with it. I loved it. I mean, it's, that was, man, that was a long time ago, but yeah, stuck with it ever since and turned it into a career. So. Yeah. Sorry. I lost you there for a second. Oh. Um, you're back. Don't worry. Okay. So what did you start out on like equipment wise when you got started? Um, well, I started on the ground as a laborer, um, then, you know, kind of jumped into a skid steer, um, where I'm from backhoes are super, super popular. Um, everybody's got a backhoe, so then went up to a backhoe and then, um, smaller excavators like minis. Um, at that time he had a 316 excavator, which I mean, really it's just a big mini, but at the time I thought that that was like the biggest machine like i was super stoked to to run it and yeah and then from there it just kind of blossomed and you know started out small and jumped up to bigger machines later on yeah and that's badass and how long have you been doing uh heavy equipment now bro uh 13 maybe 14 years somewhere around there yeah long enough that's for yeah sure, i'm sure yeah so what was what was your what was your progression like in, in the industry? And the reason I'm asking you this, right, is I think a lot of guys get hung up, like thinking that there's some magic number that you have to like, you have to sit in an excavator for X amount of hours, or you have to do this for this many jobs or whatnot. And did from my experience, granted, I'm not, I don't, I run the crane side of it. it it's how hungry are you? How fast can you learn? What are you, where are you willing to go for work? What kind of projects? And then, can you put your money where your mouth is when it comes to production? Is, is your experience similar? Yeah, it's really, I think it's all about drive. Um, I mean, showing up is winning half the battle, you know, <laughs> um, and just getting your head in the game. And I was really lucky younger because, you know, I told you I started with my cousin and uh, actually a few good friends of mine work there too. Um, my, my good buddy and his dad work there and I'm really close with all them, his dad and everything. I mean, his dad is, is, uh, you know, kind of like a father to me. Shout out to Rob Hubbard. He's the man. And that guy, um, really getting in with them. Once we left that company, I worked for several companies with those guys and Rob was really my mentor over the years. And, you know, having that, that guy that'll mentor you 
and coach you. I mean, that's huge. I think, and I feel like a lot of guys really don't get that opportunity. So, I mean, if, if there isn't that older guy that you jumped in with, who's teaching you everything, I mean, really it's, it's just showing up and working harder than everyone around you. Like you really, you really got to go balls to the wall. And my biggest thing too, was when I was younger, I would look at guys that were better than me and it was my mission to be better than them. You know, I'd look at them doing something. I say, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to do that better. I'm going to work harder and I'm going to be the guy. Like I'm going to be the guy running the blade. I'm going to be the guy loading out trucks, you know? So it, it's just motivation really. I mean, how motivated are you and, and how much do you love it and how, you know, is it just a job to you or is it a lifestyle? You know, to me, it was a lifestyle. Like I fully immersed myself into this trade and well, now here I am. So and here you are. And yeah. I think, dude, uh, I mean, it speaks a lot about your character, right? And I agree with you. So the crane side of things, obviously a little bit different, but I think in any career, it really is like that. Now, granted, like you said, shout out to your buddy there that took you in like a son and mentored you yeah. and done that because it, it it's weird in the equipment side of the world. Like a lot of these typically not all, but a lot of these older guys are like almost afraid to teach people shit because they have this, Oh, you're just going to take my job or blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's like this old guarded compound, you know, to get into where you're respected. Yeah. But so I think you, you nailed something on the head that I want. This is for educational purposes for our audience, right? Like if you're working for a company where they don't want to teach you. And when I say this, you need to be honest with yourself, look in the fucking mirror and give yourself a real evaluation. Like, are you showing up early? Are you grinding, like giving it all your effort? Are, are you learning and retaining what you learn? Like, and if you can answer yes to all that and you're motivated and you have a positive attitude and you're not showing up hungover, shit like this basic shit, right? If, if you're doing that and you're still in a place where the guy isn't willing to teach you anything, he just points and grunts, mm, go, mm, then maybe you need to look to work for somebody that does care because there is companies out there where they do want to teach people, where they do want to bring people up, but they're also not going to give it to you. So you need to first evaluate, in my opinion, you need to evaluate yourself, make sure you're showing up, make sure you're retaining, make sure you're learning, make sure you come squared away. Don't come fucking your boots unbloused and your shoes like rolling up to stretch and flex or whatever the fuck they call it where you are in your side of the country yeah. don't show up fucking smoking a cigarette need to go back and get your boots on after stretch and flex and your morning meet like come ready to go and if you're squared away on all of that and you're still not being taught then it's time to go find somebody like cody that will teach you and they are out there right yep exactly and that that's my biggest thing um, you know, being in a leadership position is, is teaching your guys and letting them fuck up. So then that way I can teach them how to fix it. Right. And like, I am really big on employee development, you know, like I really push my guys to be better. I mean, and I, I want them to be better than me, you know, like I, like that's my biggest goal is make them better than me. But unfortunately in this trade, there's a lot of people out there that just, they don't, they're not like that. They don't, they just don't give a shit about you, you know, but yeah. you know, you just gotta, you gotta find that company. And like you said, if, and I was there too, with some companies, if I wasn't getting what I wanted, I would just leave, I would leave and go get what I wanted. Cause at the end of the day, it's about you and your development. Yeah. And I mean, and you're, and, and this is again for the listeners, but you're in charge of your destiny, yep. like the destination, the end goal, whatever that is, like that's a hundred percent on you. Nobody's going to hand you a superintendent job. Nobody's going to hand you that foreman position. Nobody, they're not going to root for you to outwork them and pass them and go and make more money. No, they're going to expect you to do everything that they did, even if they're that cookie cutter bullshit where there's a guy making the, the same amount of money for the last 15 years, running that same hoe for the last 15 years. Just like, and that's out there, guys. Like, and the world needs them, but that's not who you should try to emulate. You need to find a guy that has figured out how to jump from this to this to this to work into this and to get here. And that's who you need to hold on to. And then I'd also encourage you, stop dragging up for $2 an hour. Like, stop. $2 an hour isn't shit when it comes to the long scheme of things. I mean, you guys need to start prioritizing things. A lot of people are chasing money, but they're chasing it for the wrong thing. Like, longevity outweighs money to me 
all day long, you know? Yep. hundred percent. I, I completely agree with that. And I did that when I was younger, you know, I was just chasing the dollar, you know, when I was a laborer, I was making like $25 an hour. And it's like, oh man, if I go to this guy, he's going to pay me 26. That's going to solve all my problems. That $1 more an hour. And it's no, it's gone in taxes. You don't even see it, you know, but you know, you're right. Like I would, I would rather learn things now and carry that with me to make more money later. You know, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of a tricky situation. It's hard to get younger guys and to understand that, but you know, it's just, it's how it is. Yeah. I mean, and unfortunately guys, like you're not the, you're not going to be the first one that thinks that you're underpaid and better than you are. I mean, we're literally dealing with that all day, every day. It's every job, every time you get a new hire, it, you can just pretty much expect that. So don't don't come to your leadership with uh, an expectation when you don't have anything to show. You need to be above what you're wanting and you need to be working at the level that you want before you get paid for that level, in my opinion. And that's a little bit of an old school way about it. But you literally, like you said, I'm similar to you, right? Like when I watch guys run cranes, it just depends on what we're doing, what the job was. My goal was not to be better than him in the sense that I want to put him down or be derogative. It would be like, holy shit, look at that way. That guy is a production hand. Like, yep. I want to emulate that. Like, if I can do that, then I know I'm good because that guy is fucking fantastic. And then, so next thing you know, I'm just practicing. Every time I'm swinging, it's yep, a little exactly. bit faster, 100%. added function, what, whatever you got to do just to make it – to make yourself more dynamic. And I think a lot of guys get caught up on that. They think like, I'm going to be like, I'm good enough. Like, well, I can do the job at good enough. Well, you shouldn't want to be just good enough. You need to be fucking great. Like you should be trying to be the best in that seat. You should be the guy that the dump truck drivers or when they're backing up are like, holy fuck, dude, that guy can run a hoe. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Yeah, a hundred percent. So and that's why I, um, I always wanted to work with people that were better than me, man. you know. And still to this day, like I love working with guys that are better than me because you know you learn something from them, learn something new every day. So, Absolutely. But yeah, I Absolutely. mean, it, yeah, like competition on the job side is good because it, you know, it breeds productivity. Like it makes guys better and faster. I mean, it did. That's the way I see it, anyways. And. I know there's some guys that get upset when somebody's better than them or whatever, but it's like, dude, like pull it together, work harder, try to be better than that guy. Yeah. Just literally get in and take reps. It's the 10,000 reps. If he's better than you, then he's just got more practice and he's more dialed. And it's not that that means that that's forever. Everybody thinks of it like it's period the end. And that yeah. drives me nuts. Like every day is a new chance to win. You yeah. know what I mean? Like every single day. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. Walk us through some of your progression, man, because I think a lot of guys get stuck on, like, how do I get in to be a foreman? How do I become a general foreman? How do I become a superintendent? What What's that look like? I mean, you got to start from the ground. I mean, you have to start in the trenches. You got to, you know, got to start as a laborer. Um, and basically what I did is I just picked apart one machine at a time, you know, Got good at running a skid steer, got good at running a, a, a mini excavator, got good at running a backhoe. And, you know, once I got good at those, I set my sights on something else. I want to be a good skippy hand. And ultimately, like, my goal, my end goal as far as running equipment was to obviously be a blade hand, learn how to run blade. I mean, that's like the king seat in our industry, right? And I worked my way up to that. And it takes a long time. It's like guys think it's going to it's gonna happen overnight. And like for me, I would get so frustrated because I would look at like running a blade and I would think to myself, like, I'm never going to be good enough to do that. You know, I'm never going to get to that seat, but you just, you just got to stay on the grind. You got to stay at it and advocate for yourself too. Right. Like we talked about working for shitbag employers or, you know, your shitbag foreman, that's going to step on you. Right. Like there, there's a lot of guys out there that, are all they're, they're gonna step on you. I see them every day and I've worked with them over the years. They don't want you to run blade. They don't want you to run excavator. If you're in that situation, find somebody who is gonna let you learn and let you do that. Um, 
but yeah, that's what I, the progression I went through is I just picked apart one machine at a time and then just worked my way up to, to run and blade for a couple years. Um, and then once I became a foreman, I didn't want to do, I'd, I had done it. You know, I'd spent a couple of years on a blade, running a blade almost every day. And, you know, once I made foreman, I was like, you know what? I got a guy here who's a stud operator and he wants to be a blade hand. So guess what? There you go, pal. It's all yours. I mean, I run it every now and again when, you know, he's sick or not at work and it's pretty fun. It's pretty nice to have a day here and there, but, you know, I would rather him and my other guys learn how to run it and, you know, progress in their careers, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So do you, um, are, what, what uh, position are you now? Did you work your way up to general foreman now or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm just, I'm a foreman, just run a grade crew. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. you guys cool. are doing highways or? Um, right now we're doing a subdivision. Um, over the summer, we actually did a roundabout <clears throat> um, down in Nampa, which which was very, very challenging. Um, I mean, that job that job kicked my ass. Um, but, I mean, it, we got it done. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Um, so, yeah, road work and subdivisions and, I mean, the highways, we don't really do highway work, but, you know, just kind of like a lot of city work and here and there, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. But what kind of equipment are your guys running? Um, so we have a John Deere 772 blade that goes with us everywhere. Um, right now we got a, a Cat 336, a 310 hole truck, a D6 and dozer. That's kind of what we're working with right now on the, the current project we're on. So it nice. kind of varies from job to job, you know, but the blade yeah, goes with sure. us. That blade is ours um, to run for our crew and it goes everywhere we go. Good. So you have some consistency in iron, at least it sounds like. Then. Yeah, exactly. And we use blades, I mean, for everything. Like we use the blade on every single job, mm -hmm. which is, which was way different moving here from California. I mean, California, we would do everything with skip loaders. You know, you get a blade every now and again, but... Here it's like now the blade goes with you everywhere. You use it on every job. Yeah, and yeah, now you're in Boise now, right? Typically. Yes. Yep. Boise in the surrounding area. Yeah, yeah, the Treasure Valley. Uh, you're in Boise now. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Yeah, right on, dude. I actually did Micron out there. Uh, oh, I don't know, a decade ago. I was. Oh uh, no, kidding. Micron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that Micron job. Um, I don't really know much about it. I don't know if it was like a different Micron job or whatever, but I got a couple of buddies working on that Micron job right now. It's like a nine-year job. Oh, the new, the one that's getting ready to kick? Or yeah, I the guess new. It did kick? Yeah, it's been going, I think, I don't know, for like a year or so now. But yeah, I got a buddy that sits on a good nice next-gen 395 so all day. Let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, I really want to dive into your content, bro. Let's, let's okay. start talking about building a brand on the side because- I think people kind of get an overall, like on the dirt work, you busted your ass, you started in the trenches, worked from the ground up, grinded, right. learned fast, worked hard, and then you retained what you learned. And now you're at a point where you can teach what you've learned and, you know, kind of manage guys in production and just run a schedule, which is badass. But let's talk about utilizing, like understanding that there's still more to do, right? Which is building a brand. Right. Um... I mean, overall, as far as building my brand, um, like going back to the beginning, right around, our, do you know who uh, Turner Mining Group is or BuildWit? Okay, yeah. so I don't remember the year. I mean, time is like a blur to me. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was 2017 or 2018, somewhere around there, maybe. And I could be wrong. I could be a year off. But Turner Mining Group and BuildWit were like, really coming on the scene hard on social media. Like those dudes like pioneered the dirt content. When I started seeing those posts, I was like, man, that is awesome. And I want to do something like that. So I went out and got a, a GoPro. Um, and I started doing, you know, in the cab videos, I still do them every now and again, me just running the machine, but I'd start taking my GoPro and just kind of following the guys around on the crew and i didn't have a lot of time because i was an operator and i was in the union and it, it was go 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 like 100 miles an hour but i started kind of waving that gopro around the guys i was working with and making little edits which which are terrible by the way 
they are <laughs> atrocious. Um, I thought they were the coolest thing in the world and they did not gain like any traction. Uh, but I started doing that and like really fell in love with doing it. Um, and then once, once I moved here to Idaho, um, I actually started bringing my camera with me to work and I would shoot stuff from the cab, right? I just swing the door open like a scrapers driving by. I'd shoot from the cab. Um, it was hard. I mean, it was, it was very challenging. Um, but I'd shoot for like 30 seconds, slam the door and then keep going. And I would do that all day and compile enough to make a couple reels here and there. And things started to gain some more traction and, uh, actually my, my best friend at the time when we came to work for granite, we, uh, we came together, he was my foreman and I, you know, I was tell telling him like, dude, I, I want to like create some content. He's, he was like on board with it. He's like, yep, go for it. Uh, granite, the company I work for now, they actually, um, they had a pretty good social media presence here in the Valley. Um, and they kind of liked my edits too. And I kind of talked to our vice president and stuff like, Hey, I kind of want to do this a little bit. And, they were like, well, you might as well make some edits for our page too. Um, so I started shooting a lot more content uh, on the day to day. And it's just, it's slowly, it slowly picked up traction. And now here we are, I think I've almost got 23,000 followers. Um, but like a big, a huge part of that too, is other pages were sharing my content as well. Um, like shout out to Dirt Gear Co. Those, that guy, like he shared all my videos early on. And I mean, really like that dude got me a ton of followers just cause he had, I, I don't know how many followers he has. I forget. I, I want to say like, he's way up there. Um, but really like just building my content was just trial and error. Like, dude, I don't, I still feel like I don't know much about the camera. Um, I mean, I'm still learning how to edit, but I feel like every edit is just kind of getting a little bit better and better. Um, but you know, I mean, that's kind of the gist of it. I mean, really, and now here I am. It's really nice being a foreman now um, because I run the job from the ground. I, it, I find it really challenging to run a job from the cab. Like it's it's a nightmare. Um, and being on the ground and be able to, to direct traffic that way kind of actually frees up more time for me to use the camera because I could be out there laying stuff out and pull my camera out shoot for 10 minutes here, shoot for 10 minutes there. And, and, and it, it's, it actually works out, works out pretty well. I usually shoot my camera for, I don't know, maybe on average, like an hour a day. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, but that takes a commitment, bro. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of people think that like with your little Instagram reels, like, okay, he holds a cell phone or his camera up for 30 seconds and shoots here and then, okay, for three minutes, but like, you have to want it. I mean, you have to, to be dedicated to what you're doing yep. and then all the time when you get home to figure out sort that shit out and i mean what I, I know for me in that like firearm space let's just say like if if i was to roll camera to do say like a short video short stuff like that e even for photos i bet you for every hour i shoot or every 500 photos i take i can only use 20 percent of it right you know what I mean? Like yep. by the time it's like this, like, okay, cool. I got this photo, but of the 30 photos I took in this one still, like two of them work, right? Right. Because oops, I didn't see this or oh shit, the guy's eyes blinked or just yeah. little shit you can't, you don't even realize it's going on until you're in the edit phase. And it's, I tell you with your stuff, you say that, oh, I still feel like, I mean, I feel like you're being humble. I mean, your stuff's pretty clean, dude. It actually reminds me a lot of like Aaron Witt's guys stuff and Turner Mining Group stuff. Like it's very clean and the music flow, like it's got a cool thing. And, and like, I, I'm a sucker for equipment. I'm a kid in a sandbox, right? Like right. still as a grown ass man. But I think watching watching it make what makes me excited about it is i feel like anybody can watch that and get excited about heavy equipment it's not you know what i mean there's not one size fits all it just anybody can watch that and be interested in an excavator or interested in a dozer or interested insert whatever you're doing right right yeah i get um i get a ton of dms from guys uh, younger guys now wanting to get into the trades. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome that my content is making, you know, that, that kind of an impact. 
So, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of blown up. Um, it's blown up a lot bigger than I thought it would. Um, it's leading to a ton of opportunities, like a ton of opportunities. And, um, but you know, like, like you're saying, being humble. I mean, I don't know if you know what imposter syndrome is, but that shit, that shit runs deep in my veins. Like, dude, I post stuff sometimes and I'm like, God, this sucks. And then it, you know, then it gets 250,000 views. I'm like, well, I guess everybody else likes it, but you know, I, I don't know. I'm still learning, still learning, but I'm trying to have my own style, you know, obviously like build wit and Turner and these other companies were my inspiration, but I'm trying to have this gritty, you know, like almost more dramatic take on things. You know, I feel, I don't want to, I don't want to make corporate content. I want it to be gritty and real and in your face. And like, this is our day to day. Like it's fucking cold out here. It's snowing, you know, like my guys are dirty. We're dirty. It's muddy like this, you know, and then sometimes I'll slap a song on it. And it's like, Hey, not every day is awesome. You know, like some days suck. And here it is right here for you. You know? Yeah, for sure. And I think curating off of emotions is important too, because it's, yeah. it's more, it's more of a story, you know, right. like it gives you more of a story. It doesn't need to be corporate, but let's talk about like how you can benefit from that. Cause I think a lot of guys are missing an opportunity, dude. They go to work and they work for eight hours or 10 hours, 12 hours even. And then they go home and hang their hat. Like, oh, okay, I did my day's work. But like, how bad do you want more out of life? Because right. there's opportunities everywhere. If you look, And I think what inspires me about seeing guys like you that are in the dirt world do this is like, there's got to be a level to you that has some like, I want to do this with it. Like what might have started is just share. Now, like you said, you're getting opportunities to do things and things are coming. Your life. Like, do you have a big goal for it? Um, uh, yes, I actually started a media company um, and I'm actually starting to accumulate some clients. And really my end goal is to have a company that you know, we'll provide content and social media management. I mean, now we live in a, in a time where like, would you take an ad out in the newspaper or would you post about, would you promote your company on social media? Right. And that's kind of where I'm at is like, I can help you build your brand through social media, through badass videos and pictures. Um, so my end goal really is to move into a space where that's what I'm doing. And I am slowly getting there. I actually uh, signed a contract with Turner Mining Group to uh, to run their content and to create some of their content. Um, and I have another company here in town. I do some content for them as well. But I mean, realistically, like, if I'm being honest, like, I, I don't want to do dirt work anymore. I want to, I want to, you know, put the put the workers out there on social media, and you know give them a face on social media and, and help people build their brand. Yeah. I mean, but good. Like that's how it's supposed to be. That's why we progress, right? Like you're not right. supposed to want to be a hand forever. Just like you move from a um, running blade to a foreman position. Or, so, but now you're realizing like, wait a second, I can do something that keeps me like still is meaningful to me, gives me more purpose and helps more people. But, not necessarily work for the man or building somebody else's dream anymore. Right. Like, yeah, exactly. I, uh, I really decided that 2024, I was going to step out and try to be my own man, you know, try to, you know, step out to the, into the entrepreneurship and, you know, try to start something myself and, and work for myself. It's, it's scary. I mean, it really is a scary thought because, you know, I leave my day job. There's my, there's my safety net, you know, now, now it's all on me, but yeah. I, I'm getting to this point now where, um, you know, just honestly in the last two weeks, like it's, it's right there. Like I'm almost there. So yeah. I just, I don't know. It's scary, but this is what I want. I mean, it's fun. I enjoy, I like genuinely enjoy every bit of what I do, like capturing the content, meeting new people and creating it. Like I love editing. Like I, I love every bit of it. And I was telling my wife the other day, I was like, man, if I could wake up every day and know that I'm doing something that I truly love, like 
I mean, and this is it. Like th this is this is it for me. This is what I want to do. So I'm trying. I'm networking with a lot of people and trying really hard to make this happen. Yeah. Well, you're gonna make it happen. There's no try. You're doing. Yeah. It. Yeah. Doing I, it. And I, yeah. I got respect, bro. Like. Seriously. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, especially signing the Turner thing, but more more than anything, man, I just want to commend you for going out and trying. So many people are scared to start. You know, right. like so many people are afraid of like, well, what if or. But like, let's be real, the construction, people aren't always super supportive of, of guys trying to do more. They think like, why would you ever want to leave this? We make 50 bucks an hour running this and 100K a year or whatever. Yeah. Like there's some magical number. Yeah. I want to be in charge of my time. I honestly, like I'm at this point in my life where I, I want to be, I want to be in charge of my time and, you know and create my own schedules. So that's, that's where I'm at. I mean, yes. I mean, I I've worked for companies my whole life and it, to me, it, it really sucks to have to ask for a day off. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if I want to take a day off, I'm going to take a day off, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, and but... you know, I have four kids as well. Like I'm, I'm gone, you know, 10, 10 plus hours a day, Monday through Friday. And then I get home and I'm grinding on my social media content for a few hours every night. I work all weekend to get everything prepped out for the following week, not only for myself, but for Turner and stuff too. And yeah, it's like, man, I don't want, I, I just don't, I would rather stay home with my family and work, you know, go out and shoot yeah. some content here and there, but be able to have that freedom to go pick my kids up from school maybe take them to school in the morning. You know, that's what I want. People take that for granted, bro. Uh, right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a layoff right now in between cranes and it's like, I've got to go to the dentist. I know that sounds silly to say, but right. like, I've got to take the kids to the dentist or take them to school or even show up at lunch and take them, my boy to have a cheeseburger a couple months ago or whatnot, or a month ago or so. And like, it's insane to me how much we take for granted being able to do like the littlest things and like not having, I, I'm like you, dude. So when I run tower cranes, especially I'm gone from dark to dark, right? Best case scenario. Yeah. Then some of those days, like when you are home, you're not really home. You're, you try to be, I'm not even doing content. Right. I'm, I'm just, right. My mind is shot from all day long, listening to a radio, trying to manage a schedule, manage seven different subcontractors at once and what they need to build this building. And like your brain is just fried. So yeah, I, I think it's really cool. And part of the reason like I want to share your story is because you are doing this, right? I think it's important for people to realize that you're not stuck in the seat. And I, I right. want to say that again, you are not stuck in the seat. There is other options. You don't need to feel guilty for wanting more out of life. I mean, you were created to be excellent. You were created for greatness, whether you like it or not, whether you were ready for it or not. I mean, you are, you're created for more. It's just, what are you willing to put yourself through to get it? Or what are you willing to risk? You know, um, I, I just think that I love to see men like you that are, that aren't afraid to try, you know, like, cause failure is feedback, bro. Let's be yep. real. Failure is feedback. And every time you make a mistake or you do this, you just learn from it and move on. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And you know, those jobs will always be there if you do fail or, or just try something else, you know? And like, I like the company I work for now. I mean, I, I love them. I mean, our, the bosses are great. The dudes I work with are fucking awesome. My crew, I strongly believe is the best crew there is around here. Like these dudes are, everybody's awesome. The work is there. They keep us really busy and I appreciate the hell out of them. But if I don't try to do this, then I'm going to kick myself in the ass for the rest of my life. You know, there's comfort in a, in a nine to five job, right. Working for someone else. But you know, I'm at this point in my life where it's like, I have to try this now. You know, I'm 35. I can't wait till I'm 40 anymore. You know, I can't wait till I'm 45 before, you know, it'll be 50 and then it's over, you know, then, then maybe, maybe that, that has passed on already. And then, there I am working until I'm 65, 68 years old. And it's like, well, shit. Run down, yep. beat up, life's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not about I that. Mean, and like, 
And let's be real, dude. Uh, and this, I don't mean this, this, this might come across disrespectful to people, but I don't at all mean it like to each their own on how you want to live your life or how, how you want to run your career. But if, if you look ahead of you, like, and this is for anybody, if you look ahead of you in your career, what are these guys doing that are, say, 25 years in the game, 30 years, 40 years in the game? A lot of them are beat to hell, grouchy, don't like people. They're very bitter about it. They don't necessarily enjoy it anymore. And it's just, uh, well, I, you know, we make good money and, you know, they're just, they're, it's, they're there because they were too scared to do something else. And they compromised. And if I look ahead in a career and I'm like, this is what there is, like, this is what 30 years doing this looks like. I want personally, I want more. And I think the people that listen to this show do as well. Right. So yeah, you just, I hate that people get so stuck on the idea. Like you have to kill your ego. And I, and I think that's probably, I would be willing to bet that you're going through that, especially right now, right? That that, yeah. that portion where you got to let go of, because dude, to get there, you got to create this guy in your head that like he's running crews, he runs big, big iron, like different size stuff. For me, it's like, oh, I got to run a 300 ton crane or whatnot, right? A big ass crawler. Yeah. But I, if I let go of the ego, like the, oh, that's badass, or I make X amount of money. If I let go of that, I'm over it. You know what I mean? Like completely over it. I lost you there at the end. What was that? I lost you there at the end. Oh, I said, oh, sorry about that. I there said, not. like, if I let go of like the idea of how much money I make or my ego about what size crane I'm running, like I'm over it. As right. soon as I let go of the ego, I'm done with it. Like, to be honest with you, ready for, let's try something else. Let's climb another ladder. Let's, so I mean, I'd imagine you're probably in a similar space, right? Yeah. Um, honestly, yeah. I mean, I'm at this point in my career where, you know, I, I just don't, I just don't love it. Like I used to, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of bored doing it. And honestly, like the biggest thing going back to my time and money too, like I want more money. I want a better life for my family. Like we're struggling. We are like, I do not make enough money. Um, no. And I want to pursue, I want to do everything I can to make more money, you know? Um, that was actually a big thing moving to Idaho. Is the wages aren't quite the same as California. I mean, in California, I was making a really good wage. Um, and here, my the wages got cut in half, basically. And it's really expensive to move here because, you know, every asshole like me from California is moving here and driving up the prices of everything. So, but... And that's, that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, I have to make more money, you know? And I, I mean, there's other things I'm doing also on the side, you know, I do dirt work on the side as well. And like, I just, I'm at this point where I, I just got to hustle. I got to hustle and, and make it happen. Cause I am, I'm sick of struggling. I'm over it. I'm so done. I mean, I've, I have four kids, you know, yeah. a wife and four kids and I want a better life for all of us. So yeah, again, you're speaking my you're speaking my language, bro. That's why you're sitting on the show right now, right? Yeah, like, we, we we align in that. I have four kids, also, by the yeah. way. So I, I really relate with that. I, I'm tired of not being able to one take the time off. Two, how do you afford to do anything? Yep, you got four kids to feed. Like I, Disneyland to me would be credit cards and more debt, right? Like, yeah. but that's bullshit. Cause I want to be able to provide something like that for them. Let's be real. Yeah. So it's like change is necessary, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, like I, I would love to go on vacation in the winter time, you know, it's cold yeah. here. It is. It's, it's not, it's really cold here. I'd love to take a couple weeks off in the dead of winter and go to Hawaii or go back to California and see some family and friends where it's sunny and 75, you know, yeah. but I can't afford to do that. I can't, I cannot afford to take a day off. Like it's just, it's just not doable, especially in this economy. But you know, that's why I'm at this point in my life where I'm so driven to change that. I'm like, yeah. it's, it's all I think about every single day, every minute of the day is changing that reality. Yeah, so, well, and you're doing it, bro. Like you are, it's the, 
But I think that there's an important thing you just shared there too, because you got to manifest it. You got to believe it and see it before you do it, right? Like you got to seeing is believing. So the fact that you're spending your time, like you're, you're every day you're visualizing what that's going to be like and what that is like, and you're executing on your vision. Cause there is that, that's the important part too, is the take action. Yep. For fuck's sake, people take action on your careers, on your dreams, on moving up the world, moving over, moving out. Like it's scary when you spend a decade doing something to think like, I might not do this anymore. It, it's terrifying as fuck, but what's on the other side of that? Right. Cause there's, there's guys out there right now that are younger than us, that are younger than us making fucking money, hands over fists, working half of what we do. Yep, exactly. You got to manifest it. Dude, I'm a huge believer in manifestation. Like if you think it, like if you think about your goal every single day, every minute of the day, and that's all you're thinking about, and literally this, these things are, it's all I think about subconsciously you're making small steps towards those, you know, yes. you, you really are, you know, if, if you believe it's going to happen, you got to work towards it. And it's gonna, it's gonna happen. I mean, I joked around with some of my friends. Um, was that, I guess that was last year, actually. Yeah. Last winter saying like, Oh, you know, I was kind of getting, gaining some traction on social media. I think at the time I had like 7,000 followers and I, you know, I thought I, you know, deserved the blue check at that point. Um, I mean, I was super pumped on it, but I kind of just made a joke like, man, it'd be really cool if I could do this for a living. And then like from the, I remember the day too, I was standing out on the tracks of the excavator. I was like, man, I wish I could do this for a living. And that's all I've thought about since then. And now like opportunities are literally pouring in. I mean, like my DMS are blowing up every day. It's, it's really, it's really incredible. Just like, just what the, the power of your thoughts will bring you. I mean, it's, it's yeah. awesome. I uh, couldn't agree more. We think very much alike. Like it's, it starts in your subconscious and then you just, you, I won't say you will it to reality, but manifest is extremely accurate, bro. Like you, you create what you want and you will go get it or you won't. But I can tell you, if you don't put action behind thought, you won't go anywhere. Right. So like, yeah, again, not to beat a dead horse, but for our audience, like if you see this life you want, do something about it, like take yeah. action for it. Like what Cody is saying for him is he did all this shit to get here and he poured himself into it. And then he got to a point where he started to see another route and he thought about what he wants, what his goals are, what he wants for his family. And now he's taking action literally to do that. And because he put action behind his thought, behind his dream, now he's going to see that it it's a reality. Like it's a real tangible thing that you can do with with action. <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. hundred. Don't. Yeah. If you want to stay stuck then stay stuck, you know, yeah. it's a hundred percent up to you. Yeah. So let me ask you this, dude, what would you give? Um, I, I kind of want to ask you, what would you tell those guys that are just getting started? Everybody thinks they're too late to the content game or whatnot. What's your advice for people on trying to share shit through their lens? Um, I mean, I guess, I guess I would tell them to do what I did, um, get ready to grind it out and spend all your free time editing and getting better. But, um, really like some, you know, some tricks and stuff. I, I mentioned dirt gear co. I don't know if you know that page, the dude's awesome. Um, if you like learn how to use a camera, learn how to edit YouTube is a huge help and create content and like, tag tag pages in them that's what I, I still tag pages in my reels if you tag bigger pages that share content right like there's all those pages out there like they they don't really make content they just share the content right if you if you tag those pages in it and they like it and they share it then your stuff's going to get more views i mean it's really it's all about networking right um but really like there's a uh a buddy of mine actually just bought a camera and a new computer and, and, you know, wants to really get into doing what I'm doing. And he came out to the job last week and, uh, he hung out for, I don't know, I think he was there for three or four hours. I showed him some tricks with the camera and it's like, dude, this is, you got to do this, this and that. And like, just, just get ready to grind it out. But you know, you, you have to do it every day. 
It's all repetition. It's just like running equipment, right? Like, did you jump in a crane the first time and just absolutely tear it up? Probably not, right? It's repetition. It takes time. It's the same thing with my content. Like, dude, if you go back in my page and you look at my earlier content, it's trash, dude. It's it's terrible. Like, I have so much stuff that I archived because I watch it now from like two years ago and I just cringe. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that was terrible, you know? But that's what you have to do. You have to, it's all trial and error. You got to put out shit content first before you can bump, work your way up into doing quality content. And, you know, like I said before, is my stuff the best? I don't think so. I think there's guys out there that, that make better stuff and I have a lot to learn too. But, you know, you got to start somewhere, just do it. Just start posting and, and learn your own style too. Like, like I didn't, I don't, like I said this already, but I, I wanted to create my own style based off of what I saw other creators do. I, I see a lot of guys out there that quote unquote put up like corporate content, right? Like it's very clean and it's, it, you know, it's, I don't really know how to explain it, but I wanted something that was edgy and gritty, you know, a little bit dark, a little bit dramatic, a little bit cold that tells a story and like shows what our reality is every day. And, you know, you, you got to find your own style. I think that that's huge is, is finding your own style, you know? Yeah. And the only way you do that is by repetition, right? Yeah, repetition. That's it. You got to start something. You just got to start doing it. And dude, when I first started posting, like, it was like, I was like embarrassed because I was like, man, people are going to think I'm trying to be like some sort of influencer or content creator. And I'm just not that guy. And then once I started getting followers and it picked up traction, I was like, one day I was like, holy shit, I, I kind of am becoming that guy, I guess. But I mean, I only have like 20 some thousand followers. There's dudes out there with like 150 K, like half a million. And like, hopefully I'll be there one day, but I ain't there yet. So I still got a lot, a lot of work to do and a long ways to go. Yeah, well, we're going to manifest that for you too, brother. We're going oh, 100%. 100%. You know? And, yeah. and I'll be excited to watch your journey as you grow too. Um, yeah. I, I think it's cool. Congratulations on the Turner contract. That's huge. Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, you're literally working on stuff that like the guys you looked up to do now. So yeah, in a fairly wild. short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, something else I did too was... Um, like just reaching out to other creators, you know, that, that do what I do. There, there are a handful of them out there that do it for a living. And, uh, there's actually uh blue collar brands with Daniel Yates, that dude, uh, we've talked a handful of times on the phone and that dude has helped me out tremendously, you know? So like reaching out to those guys and talking to them, dude, I get DMS all the time from guys who are asking me, what kind of camera do you use? You know, what, what, editing programs you use? How do you do this? How do you do that? I'm happy to help them, happy to teach them, you know, just, just like some of these guys have for me, you know, but really, you know, it's just, it goes back to finding that guy, you know, at your job who that older guy, that's really good and takes you under his wing, right? You got to pick that guy's brain because he's been doing it. So it's the same thing. That's, that's what I did with social media content is talking to other creators. It's been a huge yeah. help. Yeah, for sure. And then just for our audience, what 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 are you running for camera? And what what's your setup? I run a uh, Sony A seven three Mark V, and the lens I use is a seventy to three fifty. It's an awesome rig, and I don't have fancy stuff. I don't. I I see some of these creators that have like the screen on top, and you know the big microphone, and all this fancy stuff. I just run a bare bones camera, and I make it work. Did I lose you there? Yeah, for a second. Say that again. Oh, uh, so as far as the camera I run, I run an A7 III uh, Mark V, a Sony. Um, and I have a 70 to 350 lens. And that's it. I mean, that's all I run. I don't have any fancy stuff on it. So it's very cut and dry. But I also have a DJI drone. Um, actually, my guys pitched in. Uh, this year, right before Thanksgiving, and they they all they bought me a brand new drone, a new DJI. It's a Air Two, Air Two S or something like that. But it's it's badass, dude. That's really cool. Oh that's yeah, really dude. Cool. Oh, it, it that was like like 
the coolest thing ever. I could not believe they did that. The, those guys are, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, it shows that you're a good leader too. There's your feedback. Yeah. I try to be Le- leadership <laughs> to me is like the most important thing that you could have on a job site. Right. I mean, yeah. like that's, and that's, I know you see my captions and stuff. I talk a lot about leadership and employee development and things like that and teamwork. And those are, that's, what's most important to me, you know, treating people fairly and, you know, not being a dick. That's like the yeah. biggest thing. Don't be a dick. Like, I don't, I don't think sure. I've ever yelled. Like, I'm just not into that kind of shit. Like I worked for guys when I was younger that they would yell and scream and call you names. And me and my buddy actually talk about all the time. Like I've had dirt kicked in my face and stuff. And I just, I don't do that kind of shit. I'm just not, not that kind of leader. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look how that's worked out though. I mean, it set you apart. And- yep. Now look at what you're doing. I I run a Sony a7 III as well. Um, Sometimes when we're sitting in studio, like if we bring a guest in or whatnot, which we haven't done in a while now, just because like you're saying, financially speaking, the economy sucks and work is tight. But when we do, uh, we have an a7 IV as well that we've been shooting on. Um, And I, I highly recommend for anybody getting into it, like just do yourself the favor and go Sony. Like Canon's got cool colors and they're easy to use, but Sony is, Sony is where the gangsters are, bro. Like, let's be real. Sony yeah. The autofocus is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, yeah. so I started with a Nikon. My wife is actually a photographer. She does uh photography on the side. Um, okay. and she had a couple Nikons, uh, D seven fifties and, or seven fifty Ds, whichever one it was. Um, and it was cool to start out with, but you know, once I got that Sony, I was like, wow. This is, this is an incredible camera. I mean, I feel like they're, you know, specifically built to film, right? Over taking picture. I mean, the pictures are incredible too, but yeah, having that autofocus and all the features, I mean, that thing is a machine. I love it. Dude, yeah. And the new, I don't know if you've messed with the A7 IV at all yet or looked at one, but. Is that like the brandy like, one? Uh, it's not brand, brand new. It's probably two years now, I think, oh, okay. the A7 IV. But it, it can run for an hour versus 30 minutes. You don't need to restart. Sure. Right. Like, you know, like, yeah. yeah it, and the battery life is fixed. So like my A7 III can die really fast. The A7 IV yep. does not. Um, so just little, t- like little things. And, and it's, fuck, correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say it's in the 40s on megapixel versus. 30s. Okay. Yeah. That's so rad. It, yeah. The low light capability of it. Um, if you look at some of the, the, content on the page is closer. Like you'll yeah. see that the a seven four difference, just like in the like studio stuff where I'm talking with the headset on, like most of that was shot at the a seven four and you, you'll know what I'm saying. If yeah. Anybody yeah, that's I've... listening to this, you'll know that what we're saying, if you have experience with the camera. Yeah. That's I'm gonna have to check those out. Cause eventually I'm gonna have to buy a second camera, you know, to have a backup. I think you will. you know, you're, you're going to do, if you're going to do the video thing, dude, you might as well just bite the bullet and look at that FX three. Yeah. 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 I know. I seen a video on that the other day. It looks pretty extreme, (laughs) but for all the shit you're getting ready to do though. I know (laughs) we'll get there baby steps, but yeah, I'm I'm just definitely on my radar. Believe me. (laughs) I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think we let's, uh, let's do some questions before we get out of here, man. Okay. So I got to ask you, it's the staple question for the show, right? Like, um, and you, to me, like, you being you is pretty much the answer to this because it's everybody's own unique path. But what is a blue collar barbarian to you? It is somebody who shows up every day and kicks ass and takes names and the flat out gets after it. Um, somebody who's gritty and not afraid to get dirty. Um, and also maybe not afraid to say, fuck you every now and again, you know, ready to uh, lead their own path and, and take charge. You know, I would say my entire crew falls under that, that category. I mean, that's exactly how they all are. So that's kind of, it's kind of what it means to me. No, that's badass. I like it. And you do need to be able to say, fuck you sometimes. It's about being unruly in your pursuit, right? Like aggressive yep. action, uncommon action. Like y- you want it, go get it. Don't yep. wait for it. Go get it. Right. Yep, so a hundred percent. Um what what's your advice to someone just getting started, bro? As far as what? 
like, like getting started in the trades. If, if they were like somebody, like some of these young guys that hit you up and they're like, Hey man, I, I'm just getting started. Any tips to, to accelerate my career or to, to become one of the best? How would I, how can I do what you did? Um, so I kind of I tell actually have told guys this before and it, it would be to do exactly what I did. Um, I started out with small companies. Um, I mean, I worked for a few companies where like the owner was out there working with us and running equipment. I, in my opinion, start with a small company um, and find that guy that's going to give you guidance and teach you. And like sometimes having the owner out there, those dudes are a wealth of knowledge. Those guys, in my experience, they were way older than me. They've been doing it forever. Get with them, have them teach you, um, and then just slowly progress into bigger companies. I mean, I started at very small company and ended up into the union. And, you know, Granite's not union. We don't really have a, a strong union here. But in California, I worked my way up to the local three. And, uh, dude, that's the best way to do it because – with smaller companies like that, like sometimes they have no choice but to just throw you on a machine. You know, so they don't have the manpower. It's like, yeah, you're you're inexperienced, but like I need you to figure out how to run the dozer today. So you're gonna that's that's what you're doing today. If you go to work for these bigger companies and it's like, hey, I don't know how to run dozer, dude, it could be it could be two years before you ever get in one. Or maybe your foreman will let you jump in it for the last 20 minutes of the day. Like when I was in the union, I worked with dudes who had been doing it for quite a while and they only knew how to run an excavator or they only knew how to run a dozer. It's like, if you want to be a well-rounded operator, like you need to be able to run everything. You should be able to jump in everything and tear it up, like no excuses. And I feel like the best way for a young guy to get to that position is to start small and work your way up to the bigger companies. Cause like, dude, yeah. once, if you start that way, once you get to a bigger company, like you're going to be the guy because you're going to show up and be able to jump in anything. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think it's important on what you're just saying to note also that uh, those smaller companies will give you the grace to make mistakes. Whereas yep. when you go, cause you know, I'm a union operator myself. So I, I know what I can relate with what you're saying. Like you, you go to certain outfits and, Oh, you don't know how to do this with that? No, can you show me? Like, yeah, until they go motherfuck you to the foreman and then you get a layoff in two days or on Friday. Or yep. you'll never sit in that piece of equipment again, or you'll get kicked off that crew. So, like on a smaller company, and I'm not saying you can you there is small companies in the union too, guys. Like, don't beat me up, union hands. Like, chill out. <laughs> there is smaller companies that uh that are union that will like, if you could, you need to find somewhere that will let you learn, like let you make mistakes, let you, whoops, you dug the hole too deep or you are real slow at loading trucks. And like, Hey man, I need you to turn your, 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 your sorry, I'm getting tongue twisted here. You get where I'm going with this. Like, yeah. Your, your production button needs to go. Like, yeah. You better be turning cycles a lot faster. It shouldn't be taking you 15 scoops to fill the truck. It should take six or whatever your, yeah. your cup is. Yeah, um, exactly. So what's one mistake everyone should try to avoid in the dirt world? Kind of on the opposite end of your advice to how you accelerate and stand out. But how is what's something that they should avoid? Um, that's a tough one. Maybe, you know what? Avoid being a cocky asshole. I was going to say ego. Ego. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid that shit. Because you know what's crazy? Like in my trade is like the cockiest motherfuckers there are on the planet. Like, dude, it's crazy how many dudes strut their shit like they are the man. And half of them can't do a fucking thing. So it's like, just stop. Stop being like that. Like, don't do that. Be humble. Like, be humble and if somebody asks you, like, hey, can you run a dozer? Don't fucking stand there and say, like, oh, yeah, I, fuck, I've been running it for 10 years. I'm the man. Like, I'm the best there is. Just say, yeah, I've run one once or twice. That's, like, the best go-to. Yeah, I've done that a few times. And then get in there and then show them how it's done. But don't be cocky. And what's crazy, too, is, like, I've worked with a lot of guys that say, you know, they're the best dozer hands or they're the best blade hands. And then they get on the machine and they suck and they fuck shit up 
but then they still get off and will tell you how great they are. That is wild to me. So yeah, put your ego in check. That that's, I feel like that's that's a huge one in in, in my industry. Yeah, no, I. It's funny because literally right when you said that, I was like, "How about ego?" Like that's yep. what I was just getting ready to say it to you. Yep. Uh, it's so easy too once you do start to get good. Uh, if I could just add to that, once you do start to get really good at the one machine that you're good at, because you're just getting started or you've been doing it for, you know, since the dawn of time or whatever your attitude is on it, but don't be that guy that lets that become what he dies on. Like, please don't die on. I'm one thing that drives me nuts is that these guys, it's almost like the guys that won a football championship at high school 45 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> Oh, I've been running an excavator since this. I can do this and this. And, and like, hey, hell yeah. Some of you guys, hell yeah, dude. Like, you guys are incredible operators. But part of the reason you're still an operator is because you never were able to move past that. So as yep. good as you are, you're only good at running a machine because you can't run a crew or you would be. Yeah. Right? I mean, yep. like, I'm, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but call a spade a spade. Like, you want to be sitting in the seat 60 years or 40 fucking years in. Like, you're a miserable prick. Let's be real. Like, yeah. do more. Do yeah. more. Yeah. And I was never, I've never been down for that ever. Yeah. Like, I've never yeah. wanted to be like, uh, yeah, I just want to run a blade for the rest of my career. Fuck that. Fuck every bit of that. No, I want to progress and grow, you know? Yeah. And like, I, and like I have a list of machines, dude. I want to yeah. run this X through, you know? everything you know and like another piece of advice too for younger guys is don't be a one trick pony don't do that do not be a one trick pony because if you can run everything efficiently you're going to be working in the middle of winter time when the other guys who are one trick ponies are sitting at home yeah no 100 percent. yeah and you uh, got to do it and what let me ask you this, uh, and this is just kind of out of left field one on this. Um, what What's like three things that would make a guy stand out to you? You know what I mean? Like what's three things that would make a guy like become one of your leads? I lost you there right right at the beginning. Oh, okay. I said, uh, what what's three things that would make a guy become like one of the leads for you? Like what's three things that make somebody stand out in a positive? Uh, someone who is gonna take charge right like my biggest thing like my lead guy absolute unit he's a stud like half the time he runs the crew you know but it's somebody who is gonna be accountable and um keep everybody else in check when i'm not there when i'm on the other side of the job or if he sees somebody that's doing something wrong he's gonna jump right in there and correct them and tell them maybe i don't see it Maybe I'm on a machine over there. Maybe I'm doing something else. But it's somebody who's, you know, going to keep everybody else accountable and and have my back. And also somebody who um, who is a well-rounded operator. Like that's huge. Like having a lead operator. Like like I feel like every crew has to have a lead operator. And I see a lot of crews where just the foreman runs the blade or the foreman does all the good work. Like. Dude, you're doing yourself a disservice by doing that, and you're doing your guys a disservice by doing that. It's like, get out of there and let your guy run it, you know? Um, and then the yeah. third, I guess, I guess it'd be oh, somebody that um, is driven, you know? Like, honestly, like, just like you need your lead guys got to be driven, just as driven or more driven than you are, you know? Somebody who's just ready to like get after it and also somebody who's going to keep you in check, right? Yeah. Like that's huge too. Like I come up with stupid plans sometimes and my lead guy will be like, well, I think it'd be better to do it like this. And rather than being a fucking asshole and say, no, we're going to do it how I said we're going to do it. It's like, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Forget everything I said. Let's do it exactly like that. You know, that's, I'm really big on that on like, I'll ask the guys what they think. Like sometimes I'll have an idea in my head, but I'm not sure if it's, if it's the best way to go. So I just run it through them, run it through my lead guy and run it through the rest of the crew. And then 
we take it from there. And you know what? It, it gives them an opportunity to think about what we're doing. You know, it gives them an opportunity to make their own plans of how they would do things. That's huge. That is, that's really big. Yeah, dude. No, that's badass. And, and what a great answer too. Like, yeah. Incredible answer for that. Um, the last question I got for you. All right. Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do I see myself in five years? Yeah. Man, you know, I think about this like every day. And that's like so much stuff floods into my mind. Like it could go so many different directions. But honestly, in, in five years, um, I see myself being able to manage my time, um, making good money and to be able to do what I want to do, you know, being able to, to, to do what I want to do. That's huge. And not, not have to do what somebody else wants me to do. You know, I want to be able to schedule my own time and say, Hey, if I bust my ass Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I think I'll, you know, I think, it, I'll, I think I'll take it easy Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, <laughs> something like that. Like, that's just my biggest thing is just being able to be the owner of my own time. Yeah. Um, so autonomy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah. A hundred percent, man. Like, that's just, that's all I can think about is, you know, making my own schedule, you know, not, not working off somebody else's schedule. Yeah. Dude. So we're at the point in the show where we're at closing thoughts, bro. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and uh, your story with us. Uh, you know, we're a growing platform, a newer platform, but we're just out here to try to help encourage guys to one, share what they do and, and uh, pursue more and not settle. I wanna see more guys climb out of the seat and go after that next step in life, kind of like you are. I want to see more guys like figure out that they work 40 to 60 hours to 80 hours a week for somebody else, but spend zero time on doing anything for themselves to put themselves in a better position. I just want to see people fucking win, bro. Yeah. Um, and so with that, uh, do you have any book suggestions or quotes or anything that's helped you along the way as you've developed? Um, well, one quote I think about quite often is a Mike Tyson quote. Um, everybody gets, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And dude, that is like, that is like every day, right? We have a plan of this is exactly how this is go. And you, you get punched in the mouth and you're thrown a curveball, and then you got, you got to start all over and figure it out. So I think that, that like, when I first saw that quote, that like really resonated with me, especially in dirt work, right? Like yeah. you make a plan and it goes to shit half the time. S trucks are getting stuck or this is broken. The excavator broke and hey, you got to reroute, do something else, you know, come up with a new plan. Yeah. Equipment doesn't show up, goes to the wrong job site. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. You know, one of your guys calls in sick. It's right? just, like, all yeah. It's a different shit. All sip, yeah, all sorts. And then as far as books, um, I don't really read a lot of books. Um, I actually, what's helped me a lot is Jocko Willink's podcast. Yeah. So I don't know if you listen to him a whole lot, but dude, when I was a young foreman years ago, I had no idea how to lead, like zero idea. Like my guys didn't like me. I didn't like them half the time. I couldn't get them to do what I wanted to do. And I started listening to Jocko's podcast and that dude like literally changed my life. Like I practice everything he preaches on a daily basis like that, that changed my life. So if you're a young guy, a young foreman, and you know, you're, you're trying to learn how to lead people and, you know, influence guys to do what you want them to do. Like I highly suggest you go way back in the beginning and start listening to his podcast. Cause that, that shit will change your life. Yeah. Absolutely. Jocko's uh, loaded with wisdom. Uh, oh, it's loaded. unreal. I actually read both of his books as well. Well, two. Yeah. I think he's got another one now, but I've read the two main ones. Yeah, I want to read them too. Extreme Ownership. So. Yeah. Yep, and Dichotomy of Leadership and the Dichotomy yeah. of Leadership. I read both of those, so. 
yeah incredible books where can yeah. uh where can people follow you where can they check out your work bro it's at cody.j.hansen on instagram okay. yeah that's the spot and then they can support your turner mining group as well right yep and turner mining group you can also uh you can also fo uh, follow uh spires construction um they're here in idaho um kind of helping them with some content, trying to get their, their page up and off the ground. So check those dudes are awesome. If you, if you want to follow some awesome quality people, those they're, those are the guys. Yeah. So, uh, send me personally, send me that I'll follow. I'm happy to support yeah. whatever I can that you're doing, man. Um, yep. for sure. Well, audience, this is Cody Hansen, and uh, you heard it. You guys gotta, you guys gotta just grind, and you gotta work relentlessly. And it's gonna take everything you got and then some. But with a lot of hard work and grit and determination, every single one of you has the opportunity to become everything you think. And more importantly, you're gonna inspire other people. So don't fucking quit fighting. Keep working. Work harder than the guy in front of you, and. We'll see you on the next podcast, everybody. Thanks for listening.